Um, one of the aspects of the YNI experience that keeps me coming back year after year is the opportunity to tailor the units that I write to my own students and uh, their specific needs. This ensures a better learning experience for a number of reasons, but mostly by increasing engagement. So in thinking about how I wanted to present the information that I learned in Ian's Democracy and Inequality Seminar, uh, I wanted to look for ideas that would make the information more relatable to my students. So we have spent time looking at the inequalities of schools and my students were given the opportunity to research both their own school and other schools in the local area, as well as look at some data about uh, state by state comparisons for school spending. Another aspect of the YNI experience that keeps me coming back every year is that I see the direct benefit of the Teachers Institute approach and the benefit that that has on my students. I have always been very grateful to have students that both benefit from and also enjoy taking these journeys with me. This year was no exception, and you are about to hear from two of my fabulous students right now. Hi, so I'm Summer and that's Maria. And we really focused on the democracy and inequality unit that stood out like basically from previous history classes. So um, I just wanna say it was an incredibly mind opening experience to just start off. It was amazing. And we were able to learn things about our government and how the differences in inequality and democracy can change the way some people view the government. And honestly, what to expect and take away from it as well. In the unit, we discussed school fundings from different districts in California and across the country to try and compare values, supplies for each school, depending on what schools needed aid and what type of students were attracted to the school. So what kind of students fed into the school and why? Um, uh, we went over the differences in equity and equality as a society and how every individual is affected differently as a result based on wealth, class, race, and mobility. So going back from my previous history classes, everything was very formal. And when I say formal, I mean, there was no um, interactive or highly key parts that I took away from each lesson. Um, teachers would hand us busy work to fill in complete lesson plans with slideshows to recap information that had happened in history without letting us have a hand in their inter interactive aspect of lessons. So it was worksheets that we got to complete and we didn't really get to work with our table or create any posters or any like i said interactive part so in mr hartung's class we got to create posters we got to work with our groups and we got to present in front of the class which helped us become more invested in the topic alone so this year already in the first unit we've gotten to get up and walk around as a way to keep our brains moving but i also get to stay attentive during lessons and there's much more group work, which I love because you get to hear what other people think and all kinds of different ideas on different topics we got to cover. Every day we would have a warm up, which would also have class discussions based on an upcoming concept we will review, or we thought one that would be introduced. In general, this first unit has helped us so much more than we ever thought it would. Okay, um, so something different about the democracy and inequality unit that personally stood out to me uh, was the depth of details that we discussed about how taxation and money affects school. And so the most prominent aspect of the unit that was intriguing to me was when we were able to identify data in groups on all kinds of different types of schools. And we really got to understand tax rates and the amount of significance that they hold even today. So looking at these old cases and legislative votes in the Supreme Court had a significant impact on how I first saw the importance of them as they really shaped and made up what our country is today and will be in the future. Um, so in this unit, we also learned about Proposition 13. So Proposition 13 is um, a proposition that was passed in 1976 um that basically keeps property taxes low um and so because of that the amount of money given to schools is significantly less than what it could be and so it really gives an example of how these votes in old cases still impact us today so 
These tax laws show the power also that money has and how the government itself can be powerless against inequality seen in the government. Something else about the unit that stood out to me was how the disparity of the units is very complex and it is interconnected to many things. So the inequality of the schools cannot be solved easily and quickly. Um, it's caused by many issues such as Proposition 13, as well as racial and taxation inequalities. Um, so even with more money, the inequality of schools would not be fixed. Um, this could be seen through the Newark, New Jersey case study. And this, this study was when a school district was given $100 million to fix their school's uh, district. Uh, but the end result was still inequality. Um, charter schools had better teachers, better curriculum, and better flexibility than the district schools. This stood out to me because it showed that the point that inequality cannot be easily fixed, which was highlighted throughout the unit. This connects on a larger scale to our government and, and democracy because it shows how deeply embedded the inequalities in the current system of the government are. This demonstrates how inequality will always be prevalent in government as well as life. So another big question that was asked um, that he, Mr. Hartong thought of, told us to think about was, are you learning things that could apply to other classes or other situations that you may find yourself in? And me and Maria both kind of put our heads together for this one because it's kind of a question that couldn't be answered individually. So we said, there are many things that we can apply to other classes and situations, such as how socioeconomic status really affects a person's future. Um, over the summer, Maria volunteered with Second Harvest Food Bank and personally met a lot of people who had lower socioeconomic status and were struggling during COVID, like a lot of people were. And they lost jobs, they lost funding, they lost, people were struggling. So part of it we have to take into consideration our identity and how socioeconomic status really affects each individual. Um, Learning about how these people grew up less fortunate, I wonder if the social education system failed them and that if they were given the same equal opportunity as other students, would they still be in the situation they are today? We have to be able to answer those questions in order to even create a summary of who we are and what kind of privilege we do hold. Okay, uh, so throughout the unit, the analysis of government and democracy, um, showed how it really affected everyone. And so we both think Mr. Hartung did an, inc an incredible job with the way he teaches. Um, and so far we've had nothing beyond clarifying questions on topics that reflect our understanding. Um, but personally, I do not wish for any kind of lesson to be taught any differently from this point forward or the future, unless it would be a teacher preference. I think the way this unit was executed was phenomenal in every way, shape, and form. Um, in the future, I would love to discuss our government and how it will change over time, if it will at all. Um, this is because it could possibly affect younger generations. Uh, just over the past year of COVID, I've noticed um, that, a that there's a considerable increase in student voices. And so, I would want to know how the change will come upon us after everything we've gone through as a country and society. Um, still, I would love to be able to talk among my peers about something like that because I know everyone's changed in one way or another because of it. And so this period of COVID really caused a lot of change as well as many younger people to speak up on social issues such as the Black Lives Matter movement. And so I think we should also discuss more about how racial inequalities affect schools and people's futures. This is because it involves a lot of students and can be seen by how students of color struggle more than white students because of the inequality of opportunities and resources given, which is also caused by low socioeconomic status. I think this is important to talk about because it can really affect someone's future based on the quality of education that they have.
Um, thank you, Mr. Hartung, and thank you guys for listening to us today.